How's it going guys, Dragon Star Production here, back with another video, and in this edition of Dragon Ball What Ifs, we will be doing the sequel to my most popular what if so far, what if Shell was canon part 2, right after the intro. Last time, we left off with Radis' arrival on Earth. However, in part 1.5, link down in the description, we learn that Radis knows much more than what Shallot does. So we'll be picking off there. Shallot just told Kakarot who Radis was, but then Shallot would question on why Radis was even there. Radis then replies that he has come to take Shallot and Goku back, but before he could finish, Shallot would cut him off. I'm never going to work under Frieza again. Radis though, shrugs it off. Not even if it means seeing your twin brother Giblet. This not only catches Shallot off guard, thinking that his brother has been dead for all this time, but everyone else because Shallot never mentioned anything about having a brother, especially not a twin brother. Radis then points out that Gohan and Beats must be their offspring, and that they look like hybrids considering that they don't have the Saiyan hair. Shallot tells them that he would never work under Frieza no matter the circumstances and don't even point to the kids because they have nothing to do with this. Radis then decides to attack blindly not knowing that Shallot was holding back. Radis dashes in and as soon as he does, Shallot easily slides out of the way of his punch grabbing him by the hair. We won't fight here. I won't let you dare hurt a soul on this planet. Everyone is stunned by what's going on, but Shallot and Radis fly off to a wasteland as Goku, Krillin, and even Shallot's son Beats and Gohan sneak away to watch his dad fight seriously for the first time. When they arrive, the two Saiyans clash. Shallot talks about not getting a fight like this in quite some time. Radis though replies with something about his brother being so beyond him that he couldn't even compare to him. But this only enraged Shallot, just being compared to his brother. However, this also told him that he had to get stronger, because Radis was right on his level. One small slip up, Radis could win the fight, so Shallot stays on guard. He's watching every punch, dodging them while delivering fatal blows on Radis when he could. Radis though proceeds to reach around Shallot, grabbing his tail. Shallot's whole body goes limp, crashing to the ground. Luckily though, Kakarot was there to step in. Radis being damaged from Shallot makes it a lot easier for Goku to actually be able to put damage on Radis himself. Radis though quickly gets the upper hand after some time after having his power being so much higher than Goku's. Radis then builds up a double Sunday, shooting it straight towards Kakarot, engulfing him into nothing. Radis just killed his brother, but before Radis did the same to Shallot, Krillin would then speak to Beats and Gohan, telling them that they can revive Kakarot with the Dragon Balls, and this is actually caught on Radis' scouter, so Vegeta and Nappa and Giblet are able to hear. But Beats is only listening for so long until he rages out and rushes from the sideline, shooting off a final cannon, his father's move. The attack is able to knock Radis to the ground. Also though, Beats was drained giving Radis the opportunity to swoop in and grab him. Krillin tries to step in but is again slapped to the ground. Radis forces Beats to get in his space pod like he did Gohan in the canon story. Shallot gets back up and rushes straight towards Radis, power rushing to get all the way there. Shallot manages to catch Radis and also remember that Radis has gotten a beating so far so it wouldn't be hard to believe for Shallot to catch up with him so fast. Shallot uses one single hand and sends a key blast nailing Radis in the back causing him to drop the pod and Beats. Shallot wastes no time as Beats gets out of the pod and doesn't either. Shallot looks over at Beats, NOW SON! The father-son duo would then charge up a final cannon that spiraled together having Radis dissolve into nothing but ash. But Shallot is aware of his brother 
and more than likely more Saiyans just due to Raditz using plurals like them and they. And Vegeta would also, on planet Arla, would insist on coming after the mention to revive Kakarot with the Dragon Balls on having the interest of becoming immortal as well as Nappa and especially Giblet. In this time, as we all know, Kakarot would be running Snake Way while well, Shallot was recruiting everyone he thought could possibly handle some training for the Saiyan's arrival. So Shallot beats Gohan, Tenshinhan, Krillin, Yamcha, and Shallot even makes it a point to find the son of King Piccolo, Piccolo Jr. When he finds him, and after hearing, the threat doesn't wish to train with them, but appreciates the heads up. Shallot then takes everyone else up to Kami's lookout, but first having Beats and Gohan race up the tower just for some extra training. When they got there, Shallot told Kami they needed the most intense training they could possibly get. This is when Kami brings up the idea of the room and spirit of time, and also the pendulum room to prep them for the arrival of the Saiyans. The groups would then break off for the first couple of weeks. First to go into the time chamber was Shallot and Ten Shinhan, due to being the strongest of the Z fighters at that time, while Krillin and Yamcha would fight the two Saiyans inside the pendulum room. First though, before I say everyone trained for 9 months, Piccolo after sensing Shallot's power increase decided to actually come and join them in the training. So this would also mean that everyone's getting much, much stronger when the Saiyans arrive, also including the fact that they have another full-blooded Saiyan in Shallot. Shallot and Tenshin Han's training actually helps the two gain a better bond as well as learning many new techniques that the two have that they didn't have before, so get ready to see Shallot use some stuff like he does in the game. As for Krillin and Yamcha, they were struggling big time, but this only pushed them to dig a little deeper and eventually have to overcome the two Phantom Saiyans. The groups would then switch off, however Shallot thought it would be a great idea for Gohan and Beats to train with him, so he stayed back while Ten Shinhan and Piccolo went into the Pendulum Room instead. Krillin and Yamcha in the Time Chamber were able to grow stronger as well as creating some pretty cool combo moves that we'll see here soon. Now as for Shallot, he believes that the two Saiyan hybrids have great potential, so he pushes them beyond their limits for the rest of the remaining time until the Saiyans arrive. However, on King Kai's planet, Kakarot is pretty much doing the same as canning, so nothing really changes with him. But before the Saiyans arrive, we will do some power levels just so we'll see where everyone at is at. Shallot with great potential, like in the Legends game, shows incredible growth peaking at a 5000 max. Gohan and Leek would both be around probably 17,000, while Ten Shinhan also improves to 2000, while Yamcha jumps to 16,000. Not 16,000, 1600. By God, Yamcha. And Krillin staying right with Cannon with a slight increase to 1900. And now that the power levels are out of the way, we'll jump back into the story. On Kami's lookout, everyone would be training when they all feel this energy crashing the earth. And of course, Shallot would instantly recognize it and head that way because although he wasn't able to sense who, he just had a strong feeling that it had to be Giblet. But as soon as he gets over there, he sees his brother. And they don't even talk with a sh no exchange of words. The twins dash in at each other. Shellet grabs Giblet's hood and yanks him back, but Giblet counters with a elbow to Shallot's spine. Shallot bounces back with a sidekick, but Giblet manages to calculate his brother's attack. Giblet then states, simple tricks like always as he blasts his brother Shallot into some nearby mountains. Meanwhile, Vegeta would get in Nappa to fight first. However, he would first plant the Cybermen as he normally does. Yamcha steps in to the fight the Cybermen as he does in canon, and due to his boost and with Krillin's aid, the two have very little trouble. Yamcha shoots a wolf fang fist, hitting some of the Cybermen, stunning them actually, so this gives Krillin the opening to use a Destructo Disc to slice through the rest of the Cybermen. However, this only makes Nappa laugh, who then approaches Krillin and Yamcha. Nappa being at 4,000, I wouldn't say is mocking the two, but does have the upper hand, even though they are right at his power between the two of them. But Tenshinhan would come in, charging a tri-beam, 
that he uses for quite some time charging it up to make it as strong as he possibly can, eventually shooting it off, but Nappa is able to notice it and barely dodges it just like in canon. The three then move in on the attack, but Nappa battling three on one was struggling, but I'm not going to say that he's going to be beat so easily. But out of nowhere, a spiral beam crashes through Nappa's heart. Everyone stares up to see Piccolo, who just killed Nappa right then and there. Now, jumping back into the brothers' fight, the two somehow both managed to stay relevant in power. However, Giblet did have the slight push, just because Shallot didn't want to kill Giblet like Giblet was trying to do to him. Shallot flies back, I won't join you, Giblet. This is who I am now. Nobody will ever change this. I'm one of Earth's protectors, and you're the danger I must protect it from. Giblet only smirks, then goes back in on the attack. Shabbat and Giblet both were getting extremely tired, so Giblet resorts to a last resort and builds a humongous blast in his palms. He looks over at his brother. Either you join me now, or you pay the consequences, Shallot. Shallot, though, still refuses, but Giblet definitely delivers. He throws the energy wave, but not towards Shallot, but at Leek, who wasn't fast enough to move out of the way. Gohan then leaps down at his best friend, lying dead, crying his eyes out until a rage would then come over. Gohan then rushes at Giblet, although his power still does nothing as Giblet simply smacks him to the ground. However, he wasn't the only one that got enraged. Shallot was officially about to boil. Shallot started shaking, his power rising, increasing extremely fast, 6,000, 8,000, until eventually breaking Vegeta's scouter. Vegeta screams, it's the legendary Super Saiyan. And he was right. Shallot's aura lit up in a golden shade as he was pushed past his limit, becoming the legendary Super Saiyan that everyone dreamed of seeing. Shallot would then pick up his head after turning into this legendary form, and then he would shoot straight up at Giblet, knocking him into next week. Shallot was beating the crap out of his brother. Vegeta then tries to use a last resort as as he throws a power ball into the sky. Giblet and Vegeta both turn into great apes. Shallot though being a super saiyan is still too much, but Gohan transforms into a great ape as well. And his first target was Piccolo due to him being in his sight. So while Shallot was fighting the two great apes, Piccolo had his hand full with Gohan. Piccolo was extremely outclassed in this fight as he tries to use his stretch arms, but all this does is make it easier for Gohan to grab him and literally squeeze him to death. However, during this fight, Kakarot finally arrives, and Kakarot notices all the fighting and everyone that is dead. He actually can sense his Shallot's power being over 250,000, outclassing both Vegeta and Giblet on his own. So this is when Kakarot decides to calm down Gohan because Shallot was clearly wrapping up the fight with a final cannon. The cannon hits Giblet and Vegeta both before the blast could even hit Vegeta though. He is manages to pull Giblet in front of him. Giblet taking full head on collision with the blast falls not breathing. As for Vegeta, he was injured to the point where he was helpless. Vegeta couldn't crawl away as he was paralyzed from Shallot's attack. Shallot then falls from the Super Saiyan completely drained after using his strongest attack that he could possibly use, while Kakarot's voice helped Gohan calm down. Kakarot knew that they had to do something, so he calls Ten Shinhan to go get some Sensu Beans, even considering getting one for Vegeta. This catches everyone off guard, but Kakarot really wants to fight him as he says, this is really the only reasoning as we all know, but this also causes Vegeta to stay on Earth because he is paralyzed and he cannot move, and Shallot is definitely not going to let him get away and go tell Frieza's army or whatever because that's initially what Shallot thinks they want him to do, is to work under Frieza. So this would really mean that Vegeta was kind of stuck, but at least Bulma would be the one actually taking care of him. As for Shallot, he was thinking of how to tell Launch that his brother killed their son. But at least he knows with a trip to Namek, everything could be fixed because he's told that Mr. Popo has Kami's home planet. 
ship that he arrived on. So Bulma helps fix the ship as well as Dr. Briefs. In due time, Shala and Kakarot were training like crazy in every way that they possibly can. Luckily, Bulma made the gravity ship, which Shala and Kakarot both take while Bulma, Krillin, and Gohan, and even a weak Vegeta, head straight to Planet Namek to find the Dragon Balls. And guys, that is where this video is going to be coming to a close. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. This is by far my favorite what if writing so far just because I love writing Shallot's character because I kind of get to make it up on the spot. And I really hope you guys are enjoying it too. And get ready because the trip to Namek is pretty awesome. So make sure you like this video, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell notification to get any alerts of when I upload. Also guys, don't forget to join the Discord and follow us on Twitter as our next follow goal will be a hundred followers. I hope we can get it there guys, I know we can. I'll see you guys there and in the next video. I'm out.